Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for season one. This season was all about establishing uh, some foundations for our discipleship journey. We want everything we do, um, and not just in this discipleship pipeline, but all areas of our life to come back to, uh, to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so today we're going to review season one uh, a little bit and then also talk a little bit about discipling others and uh, invited Pastor Frank to be with us for this episode um, as he's actively uh, discipling others uh, in his life. Um, but also he's been a big part of season one as well. Um, and so we're going to just review very quickly the gospel. Uh, so Frank, where do we learn that the gospel starts? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we learn that it's trusting the story. Mm-hmm. And as we read scripture, we see the big story of how God interacts with humanity and ultimately has a plan um, to redeem and save us. And so it's learning that story and ultimately trusting it. Yeah. And I, and, I, and one of the big things we hit in this season was it starts in Genesis 1, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like we see God begin to unfold us. We often think of the gospel as just, oh, here's Jesus, Matthew, <laughs> right? But yeah. like this was all playing yeah, it's all out. Important. Yeah. It's awesome. So uh, we learned about trusting the story. Um, then we were using an acronym. Uh, so that was G, God created us to be with him, trust the story. Um, o, our sin separates from God. We've been damaged by evil. Uh, and we've talked about the relationship being broken mm-hmm. uh, and the need for a deliverer and a rescuer, as you just mentioned. Um, so why don't you give us the next two yeah. letters of the yeah, acronym? Yeah, yeah. So S, sin cannot be removed by good deeds. And then P, paying the price for sin. Jesus died and rose again. And so we talked about how we can't fix this relationship ourselves, right? Jesus has done that for us. He's given us the better identity, the better meaning, the better purpose that can only be found in Christ. So then we move to E, everyone who trusts in him alone has eternal life. And L, life with Jesus starts now and lasts forever. And again, this acronym is just to help us remember. It's not a guide that you have to say word for word this way. Um, But we talked about we respond to the gospel with humility. And we need the gospel not just as a singular moment, yes, but we need it ongoing uh, within our life. And so that was the first half of season one. Second half, we talked about how to grow. Um, that growth has to be expected in our life. We can't stay spiritual babies. Mm-hmm. Growth has to be examined. And we said we do that through Kairos moments and how God is speaking to us. We kind of get to the roots of that. Um, and then how the gospel speaks even to those roots that we see. We talked about the idols of power, control, comfort, approval. That's all going to come up again throughout this. But all of this growth is based on Jesus' work. We can't manufacture it no matter how hard we try. and We can't manufacture it, but we can position ourselves. And so with the foundation of the gospel and then positioning ourselves for Jesus to grow us, that's going to kind of push us into season two as we talk about some other things. But as we mentioned before, uh, Frank is living this out. Um, as disciples, we're not called to just intellectually learn, but actually to live this out and to share it with others. And uh, my, this is my last plea to watch the trailer uh, of this season to get to get our heart for this. This is not just, oh, I gained some knowledge. I listened mm-hmm. to a bunch of episodes. Like, no, there needs to be intentional investment in your life from other people pouring into you and then you doing the same to others. And so um, I hope you've been meeting with your disciple. You should have done that twice already um but want to talk with frank frank thank you for a few minutes just a little bit of what does it look like to disciple other people Mm -hmm. uh, in our life and i know that you've done some formally through pipeline and some Mm -hmm. not formally again pipeline is just a tool uh that we can use um so were there any fears in stepping out and discipling others and obviously you did that in your time as a youth pastor as well Uh, you know Mm -hmm. what, what maybe some of the fears that you had in that i think the fear is always of like do I actually know enough to do this Mm -hmm. and am I good enough to actually pour into somebody I think to show them who Jesus is and so I think for me it's always kind of wrestling with those two a little bit of like am I in a spot to actually do this um and do I know enough to teach um I feel like this has been helpful in walking through this as a church I think um since you know we start a connect of doing this with a couple people and having a framework um has been helpful because i think even for me it's like when i discipled people i think it was by accident i don't Mm -hmm. think that there was any kind of like plan or anything like that where if you look at jesus he was pretty strategic in the way that like he talked to his disciples and he lived life with them um and i don't think i'd ever seen anything intentional quite like that so Sure. And like we said, it's, it's a tool. Right? Mm-hmm. It's not the end-all be-all, uh, but it's something that can help us. Um, what would you say to somebody who maybe has some of those same fears? Like, mm-hmm. how would you encourage them now being on, not, I'm sure those are still challenges yeah. from time to time, but being on the other side of it, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think there is a posture of it where it's like, I think that humility is a good thing to have. Or I think if you feel like you've arrived and you're, re- and you're mm-hmm. like, 
I know every and like you might have some trouble ahead a little bit. Um, and then I would also just tell you like Jesus commanded us to do this. Like he didn't ask us like, hey, when you're ready, make disciples. He said like, do this. Mm-hmm. And so again, like if this is Jesus' charge to us as his followers, then I think like regardless of how I feel about it, I should do it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, has there anything that's been surprised you in your years that you've discipled others, things that maybe you didn't expect to happen that did, or uh, just things that have caught your interest along the way? Yeah, it's fun. Mm-hmm. I, I like. I actually enjoy it. Um, for me, I think discipleship is shared life with people, and it's it's relationship. Um, and and again, I, you said it earlier. Like, if you're in this just to gain knowledge and to check it off. You're missing it. Like the whole goal of this is to hopefully build relationship with the person um, that you're walking this through with um, to, to share life. And, and it's shared life, I think, and, and rubbing shoulders with people where discipleship happens the most um, and not really in a classroom setting per se. And so I think um, for me, it's just sharing life with people and, and talking about things and wrestling with and hearing what they think and back and forth. And so I think it's it's really life-giving and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, so one last question, I'm kind of going off the script here, so we'll see how it goes. But um, have you felt that this has been done for you over your years, that others have discipled you and poured into you, or does it feel something that you're kind of learning on the job a little bit? So if anyone who has watches this, people have poured into me. Um, but again, I don't know that it was like intentional per se. And, and again, does it always need to be structured and, and intentional? Probably not. But like, um, again, I do think having like important things to walk through, like Jesus taught very strategically on finances and relationships and loving others. And so he was very intentional about the things he taught, where I think a lot of times it was just kind of... Um, like, hey, we're together, let's talk about this, that kind of a thing. And, and then I also think, like, it's probably different for me and you since we're professional Christians where I think a lot of it was being taught how to do it professionally, and I don't yeah. know about how to, like, follow Jesus as Frank before the the church stuff behind sure. it, too. So. Well, some good observations. Um, so <clears throat> before we go today, I was wondering if you could pray for us, right, for those watching mm-hmm. uh, that we would be discipled, um, but then also that the Holy Spirit would empower us that, you put people in our life, give us wisdom and knowledge and skill that mm-hmm. we could disciple others as well. Yeah, sure. I'd be happy to. Um, Jesus, I just thank you um, for everyone who is is walking through this process of, of being discipled. And I even just pray, uh, Holy Spirit, would you just continue to re- reveal Jesus to their hearts, to their minds? I pray that, that this wouldn't just be gathering information, but it would be... In, in, in interaction and a relationship being built with the God of everything who loves us so deeply. And so would you reveal that to us? Would you speak it to us? Um, I pray for the disciple and the discipler going through this, that, that there would just be real, genuine community that's built, that there would be authenticity and vulnerability. And as it happens, that growth would take place, that we would see fruit, um, and that you would give us all courage to be people who disciple others. It's what you've called us to. It's what you've charged us with. And so from myself and Dave to to everyone who watches and listens to this, God, I pray that you would just stir that heart in us to bring people along into the fullness of life that you have for us and that we would just experience that life here and now. And so, Holy Spirit, give us wisdom, lead us, guide us, direct us. Um, and would we just grow in the depth of our love for you, Jesus? In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. And so before we go today, one last get to know you question. Um, so our audience may know that uh, you had COVID about three years ago now, and yeah. you still can't taste or smell, uh, which has got to be very sad. And we, yeah. we lament with you yeah, yeah, yeah. on that. So uh, again, I don't know if this is, I mentioned before, this, this might be a, a bad question to ask or, or a jerk <laughs> question to ask, but... Uh, uh, what is the food that you actually miss the most being able to whether it taste or smell? Yeah, so let me just say it's not as hurtful to answer this question because the main benefit has been I don't smell my kids diapers changing <laughs> them, And so that's been great. Um, but on the food part of it, I think I, I honestly just miss my favorite dishes fucker rigatoni um, a good pizza things like that like it everything tastes the same, you know, so there's no 
you know, I could eat Domino's pizza and Di Lorenzo's, and it's the same thing to me. So that's kind of sad. Wait, those are not the same. <laughs> if not, I mean, we'll have to go. We'll, it'll be part of the discipleship journey. Uh, we'll eat pizza together. But uh, yeah, there, so I think yeah, it's that part of missing out on on just the goodness of food. Okay. All right. Well, we hope that uh, that it returns and that you can enjoy the blessing of the Lord. That would be fantastic. You know, great. So cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us for season one. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next in season two.